Before you watch this video, for example three, you should try to work this to work out part A on your own. So if you haven't done that already, you should pause the video and then come back to it after you've had a good chance to try it for yourself. Okay, well, welcome back. I hope you have a good solution to compare with the one that I'm going to work out now. And so we are going to look at a new alternating series, n goes from 1 to infinity, of minus 1 to the n minus 1 over 2n cubed minus 1. And we want to prove that this series converges. Okay, I already said it's alternating, but um, let's um, rewrite it and let's write down what bn is at first. So this is alternating. We have the minus 1 to the n minus 1 term that's going to cause the sign to switch back and forth to positive, negative, positive, negative. And bn is 1 over 2n cubed minus 1. Okay, we are ready for our scratch work. Let me fix that. Okay. Scratch work. All right. To use the alternating series test, we again have to check our two conditions. We need to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of bn. And so we have the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 2n cubed minus 1. And yes, as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, 2n cubed minus 1 gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and so 1 over this really large number is 0. So that's true. Check. Okay, second condition. What about the bn term and the bn plus first term? So for bn plus 1, we need to plug in n plus 1 in to the nth term of our series. So we have 1 over 2 times n plus 1 cubed minus 1. All of this is in the denominator. And we are comparing this to the bn term. And bn, we already wrote that down, that's just 2n cubed minus 1. So does the inequality go in the right way? So we need that the n plus first term is less than or equal to the nth term. And yeah, that's true again, because the denominator on the left-hand side is larger than on the right-hand side, and so overall the term on the left-hand side is smaller than the term on the right-hand side. So this is also true. All right, we are, right, we are ready to write down our proof. And the wording is always the same. Since the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 2n cubed minus 1 is equal to 0, and 1 over 2n plus 1 cubed plus 1, oh, sorry, minus 1, 2n plus 1 cubed minus 1 is less or equal to 1 over 2n cubed minus 1 for all n. The given series converges by the alternating series test. Okay, done. So we know it converges. Now the question is, what's the value of this series? And in part b, we are asked to estimate this series accurate to within 0 0.005 of its true value. But this is a new question. We haven't seen something like this before. But we know something about the error of the series. So we know that if we're using the first few term, terms to estimate the value of the series, we can use the next one, so the first term that we haven't used, as the error. So we want that next term to be less than 0 0.005. Okay, 
Let's write this down. So if we use the first n terms to approximate, then the error of this estimation is less or equal to the next term, so the n plus first term. So, okay, we have our series minus 1 to the n minus 1 divided by 2 times n cubed minus 1. So that's approximately 1 minus 1 over, when you plug in um, 2, you get 1 over 15. The next one is 1 over 53. You can figure this out if you're not convinced. Write down what these values should be. So I get minus 1 over 127 and so on. And eventually we're going to come to the nth term. So we have minus 1 to the n minus 1 divided by 2n cubed minus 1. And so the error is going to be less or equal to bn plus 1. That would be the next term. So that would be the one that comes over here the very next one. So we want this error to be less or equal to 0 0.005. So let's write it down what this means in our particular case. Bn is 1 over 2n plus 1 cubed minus 1. And we want that expression to be less or equal to 0 0.005. And our task now is to figure out for what value of n this actually happens. Does it happen for n equals 1, for n equals 2, for n, n equals 3, for n equals 4? We could do this with trial and error. We could plug in different values for n, see how small that number on the left-hand side of this inequality is, and check, is it less than 0 0.005 or not? And if not, then we increase n, and we just keep looking. But that's not a very efficient way. We can do better by using some algebra and looking at this inequality and solving it for n. So... Let's solve for n. What's the first step that we should do? We want to get n all by itself. Right now we have a fraction, so let's multiply both sides of the inequality by that denominator. That gives us 1 is less or equal to 0 0.005 times the denominator, 2n plus 1 cubed minus 1. And okay, now we need to get to that n. So there are several things that we can do. We could um, distribute. And if we do that, there, there are different things that you can do. And different steps will lead to slightly different solution paths, but they always will come up with the same with the same answer at the end. So I'm going to start by distributing. That gives me, and I'm going to flip my inequality around. So I'm going to have 0 0.01 times n plus 1 cubed, and then minus 0 0.005, and that now is greater or equal to 1. So I did two things here. I distributed. And I also flipped the inequality around. Okay, what can we do with this now? We want to, again, get somehow to this n right here. So I'm going to add 0 0.005 to both sides of the equation. And that leaves me with 0 0.01 times n plus 1 cubed on the left-hand side 
and that is greater or equal to 1.005 on the right hand side. So I added 0 0.005 to both sides of the equation. What are we going to do next? How about dividing by 0 0.01? This gives us an n plus 1 cubed is greater or equal to 100.5. Dividing by 0 0.01 is the same as multiplying by 100. And now we are almost there. So now we can take the cube root on both sides. That gives us an n plus 1 is greater or equal to the cube root of 100. Point five, And last step, we are subtracting one from both sides. So I have n is greater or equal to the cube root of 100.5 minus 1. And if you plug this into your calculator, you get a value of about 3.649. What does this mean now? So we have that n has to be greater or equal to 3.649. n represents the number of terms that we need so that the value of our sum is within a certain error of the true value of our series. And so n has to be greater or equal to 3.649. n also has to be a whole number because we only have one, two, three, four, five terms. And so what this is telling us that is that we need four terms to reach the desired accuracy. So our conclusion is we can achieve the desired accuracy using four terms. Okay, so let's figure out what that value is. So we have to use, this was the series we were looking at, n goes from 1 to infinity, minus 1, to the n minus 1 divided by 2n cubed minus 1. So we can use four terms. The first one was 1, then we had minus 1 over 15, then we had plus 1 over 53, then we had minus 1 over 127, so we need four terms. This gives us an approximate value of 0 0.9443. And we can be sure that this value is within the 0 0.005 error of the true value. So this approximation is accurate to within 0.005.